So to begin with, this is a very important point. What is comprehension? Comprehension is the job you make your brain do in order to understand the text as a reader. So we're going to be focusing on comprehension as we read. So the learning intention is we are learning to understand what we read and answer questions. The learning task is is explaining that during and after reading, it is important to check that we understand what we read. We need to constantly make sure that we reflect, make connections, visualize and monitor for meaning. This means ensuring it makes sense to us. So I wonder how can we make sure we understand when we're reading? I wonder what are some things I can do if I don't understand what I have read. We're going to have a think about that in this, in this task today. Remember, good readers can locate and remember what they have read and use clues to understand a text. And in this little picture here, you can see that comprehension is, I understand what is read to me and what I read. I understand what is read to me and I understand what I read myself. Now you are going through the first success criteria right now. You're going to read the book that we started on Tuesday to yourself out loud. And then you're going to answer these questions to test your comprehension and to test that you've understood the text. Please, if you do not know the answers, please go back and reread the book one more time or go back and check, um, you know, repeat certain pages if you need to, because your goal is to make sure you understand what you have read. And after, you're going to recall your spelling skills um, at this link here. So just as a little recap, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about what um, monitoring means when we're reading. So when we are monitoring our reading, it involves making connections between the ideas in the text, all the illustrations, and our own experiences. So we, we paint a picture in our mind, visualizing the setting. So where is the story taking place? And the events, what is happening in the story? by making those, those connections to what we have experienced ourselves, So if we're reading a story, um, for example, with The Great Escape, it, it, um, the story begins with a girl and her mother. You can make connections to yourself and your own mother um, and think about when she might have surprised you, for example. So this uh, monitoring is, is it really important that we're making connections and this is connected to comprehension. It helps you to understand a text when you make connections. The second thing is that it involves using visualizations and that's basically, like I said before, painting an image in your mind. You, um, you read, when you read or when you hear something, it, you can visualize it in your mind. You paint that scene, you paint that character, you paint um, the image in your mind. So you can use visualizations and further clues in the book to make predictions and suggested ideas about the characters. So in this book, The, Greatest, the Great Rabbit Escape, you um, can see the pictures, yes, but there, it doesn't tell you absolutely everything. So you might need to um, imagine with the text that's given to you what other characters could look at, look like in the book. What what could the what could um, the girl's house look like? Um, you know her neighborhood, for example. So you need to use these clues to help you. And you also. It, monitoring also involves identifying and discussing clues in the text which support our predictions and our inferences. Now, last term we talked about inferences being, um, you know, um, parts in the book that we need to, you, we need to, that the answers are not exactly given um, specifically. You need to use clues and your own thinking and your own connections to come up with a suggested answer. Um, and, and it doesn't need to be, a, you know, specifically one answer only. So, you know, with, with, if you think about that, there's a clue in the book um, for why the girl has called her rabbit gumboots. 
as you can see in on every page she's wearing red gumboots so when we monitor our reading we need to go back because we need to go back to the text and check because I didn't know I didn't pick that up straight away um, that the girl was wearing red gumboots and maybe that's why she called her rabbit um, that name um, so we need to search for those clues we need to to look closer and lastly monitoring our reading involves um, making sure we're listening to ourselves read when we when we listen to the teacher read it's often easy to identify mistakes that the teacher has made you also need to do that to yourself you need to read aloud and listen to yourself read and monitor when you make mistakes and and when you're not sure with of something so when something is unclear we need to try and go back and reread that sentence or look for clues close by to, to make sure that we understand how to read it. And you will see me do that when I'm reading. If I make a mistake or I miss a word, um, it doesn't sound quite right, I need to go back to the beginning of that line, reread it to make sure it makes sense. And the next thing that we do as readers with comprehension is questioning. Good readers can ask questions to help them understand what they read. We are learning to ask questions during and after reading to better understand the text. So when you when to be successful in this, you need to be able to ask yourself questions before and during reading. You also need to be able to ask a range of questions to help you remember, understand and explain what you read. So you can use um, things in the book, such as headings, pictures or words from the text to help you think of questions that you could ask and to help you remember um, what you've just read. And there are thick and thin questions that you can ask about a text. Um, and we're going to explain what that means in a minute. So thick questions are questions that make you think and help you analyze the story for deeper understanding. And thin questions are the questions the, these questions help you clarify and fix your understanding of the story. So the thick questions are like the why and how questions. They need evidence from the text to answer them and it makes you really think deeper. It could have many answers so that's kind of like inferential. Thin questions are you know specific questions like where, what, when, who. They are easier to answer and the answers are directly found in the text. They are yes, no um, questions as well. And they typically just have one answer. And these are known also as literal. So thick and thin questions are very, very important to look at. And here are some examples of qu questions you could ask yourself when, when you're reading. I wonder who that person might be. I, I wonder what they, may, what they might be doing next. I wonder when they're going to find the rabbit. I wonder where they might find the rabbit. So these are examples of how to um, make sure that you are focusing on your understanding of the text. So now that you've listened to my little VIP, you're going to read the book yourself aloud. But wait, before you go and read the book, I'm going to model some examples of building comprehension skills as we read. We all race down the road after gumboots. Ah, uh, hmm, this next word is quite tricky because there's a lot of letters in it. But if I look closely, because if I sound out the individual letters, it's going to definitely be wrong. N, E, I, G, B, O. Mm, that doesn't make sense. So I need to look closely for some letter patterns. Well, I do remember that the next four letters after the N makes the sound A. And that's the long vowel for A. Also, it's the, four, the first four letters in the, the, num the number 8 when written as the word. So I could try that. N, A, B. That's better. Hmm. Our neighbor Edith is where A. A, we're at it. Mm, mm, we're at it. Mm, well, I remember that A I is the long vowel for A, so let's try it with that. We're at it. Waiting. 
Our neighbour Edith is waiting with a plat of cakes for the postman. That doesn't make sense. A plat of cakes? Well, I know E has a special job in this word. It helps the A say its name. It works through the T to help the A say its name. Pl -a -t. Plate. That's better. Our neighbour Edith is waiting with a plate of cakes for the postman. Mum says Edith can talk the leg off a horse. I wonder what that means. Well, I guess if you talk so much, it could make someone feel a little bit tired and want to want to sit down or 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 not be standing any longer. <laughs> Maybe that's what it means. But Gumboots doesn't stop to chat. We follow him down a driveway into a jungle of elm trees and through a broken paling fence. Paling fence? That word's unfamiliar. I'm not very confident with this word. Maybe if I try the uh, the different vowel. So remember, there's short vowels and there's long vowels, and I just read that word with a short vowel, paling. Why don't I try it with a long vowel? P -ailing. Paling. That sounds better. Well, if I look that up, I will find that that word means pieces of wood, a fence that's made out of planks of wood. We tiptoe back through the Kirkpatrick's yard and into the jungle of elms. We drop Norman next door and give Edith a big hug. Then mum and I go home. Now, I need to make sure I understand what's happening on this page. We drop Norman next door. Why are they dropping Norman next door? Well, I can see they're going home now, so they have to tell they have to tell Norman to go back home as well, to his own home. And Edith must be this elderly woman here that they're giving that mum's giving a hug. She probably also needs to go to her own home. We follow the rabbits down the main street. Mrs. Finkel smiles and waves goodbye. The important man leaves to find his car. Back at the crossing, John holds his stop sign proudly and we back at the crossing, John holds his stop sign proudly and we all cross the road. Did you notice I had to reread that again because I had stopped here, but the sentence had to keep going. Now I'm going to ask myself some thick and thin questions to make sure I understand this what's happened so far. Some thin questions could be where have they been? What are they doing? Who are they following? These questions are easy to answer because the answers are right there in the book and you just need to find them. So where have they been? Well we know they've just been looking for gumboots all over the neighborhood. What are they doing? Now they're following gumboots and the other rabbits. Who are they following? Gumboots and the other rabbits. The evidence is right there in the book. But these thick questions are a little bit more trickier. You need evidence from the text, but you also need to use your thinking skills to come up with some answers. There could be more than one. Why were all the people following and helping? You have to think about that. Well, maybe because they're a friendly neighborhood and they all know each other and they want to make sure the rabbit is safe. That doesn't exactly tell you that in the book. You have to use your thinking skills and your connections to, to come up with that answer. How did Gumboots know all these rabbits? Well, we don't know that for, for to be specific. We have to do some thinking. It could be his family because there is a bigger rabbit and some littler rabbits. And we also know that they're similar colors to this rabbit and him. So they could be a family. But it doesn't exactly tell you that in the book, does it?